Ivy Tree Studio. Welcome to our channel. And today we're going to talk about the creative process in general, what it's all about. Uh, maybe you'll learn something. And I'm going to flip through my mood board that I created for our Creative Girl Club and talk about um, how I created it and the purpose of a mood board etc so um, please watch all the way through don't forget to subscribe and like our channel and share it with your friends and let's go down to my table today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step flip through of my mood board um, over at the Print and Play Creative Girl Print and Play Friends Club that we started um, last month, uh, this was our first challenge for the girls, and the idea of it was to kind of show who you are and the things that you like and the things that you like to do, and so on, so that we can get to know each other, but also for yourself as a creative person, just to um, get your creative juices flowing for the month ahead and kind of to inspire yourself with your own uh, creativity and that's what we try to encourage in the club it's not about competition or comparing yourself with what anybody else is doing it's it's kind of collaborating creatively getting ideas f from each other um, and then it, encouraging each other to create more often um, I think the word inspiration um, I find in local groups especially, um, but also in the global uh, creative community, it seems like uh, people depend on others to inspire them to create. And there is an element of that in your creativity. Um, Einstein said the secret to creativity is not to reveal your sources. So we all are influenced by what we see online in our research, creative research, what we see on social media happening and try to follow trends and all of that. For me as a creative person, I'm a typical little uh, rebel where that's concerned. I like to do my own thing. So you have to, um, especially when it comes to your own development creatively, you have to get to a point where you do the work. So. Um, the best way to explain it, um, when I started my mixed media uh, journey as an artist, it was a couple of years ago, I was living overseas and working as an English um, lecturer at a, at a college in the Middle East with my husband, and um, I broke my ankle, and so I had lots of time to myself, and I found myself searching out creative things online, and mixed media caught my eye, and I've always struggled kind of to know which medium fits me and um, which medium would I enjoy to invest my time and energy into and should it be oils, should it be um, acrylics, should it be watercolor, what what kind of medium would I like to do, should it be clay and doing pottery, Is it what is it, there's so many things that you can do as an artist and start off and a lot of us have a lot of different hobbies and we hop from the one to the other because we get creatively um, bored quickly with one thing but it's not a question of you get bored and you chuck it and you never touch it again sometimes things don't fit you so you leave it behind but other times you you learn a bit and you incorporate it in what you love to do so eventually you develop a style of something that fits your profile and fits your thumbprint and that's what I want to encourage in the club and and the fact that we did that we created the club we've I've done a lot of Facebook groups and and I got frustrated with the fact that people kind of join a group and then sit back and they want you to entertain them and encourage them and uh, challenge them and do all the work and <laughs> I'm just one person so I can only punch out so much creativity then you get to a point where you actually just duplicate what everybody else is doing and that's not what, who I am or what I want to do and so I started the club with a specific purpose to get girls creatively involved in the process so if you want to join the club but you just want to sit back and see other people do stuff then that's not a club for you please don't join you're just going to waste your time and mine but um, if you really want to grow your thumbprint and you want to grow your own art and you want to be just want to be more creative then I want to encourage you to join us um, 
it's not just for local girls, it's open internationally. I know a lot of South Africans specifically live overseas, so if you South African, you want to join a South African group, then, then you can join, but it's also open to anybody and everybody. All right, so the first challenge was the mood board, and the mood board is just to get you going creatively, and it's to inspire you with your own creativity, inspire yourself. If you see your creativity on a piece of paper, then it's kind of, it's more personal and you're going to enjoy it more rather than just looking at what, what someone else is doing. There's a lot of stuff I see on Instagram, I'm an Instagrammer, that I really love. It's beautiful, but I'm never going to try it. I'm never going to do it because it's not my thing. So I can celebrate what somebody else is doing despite the fact that I'm never going to try it. But then what about my own creativity? When am I going to grow that and how am I going to grow that? And those are questions that I want people to ask when I join this club of creative girls because I'm not putting people in a box and say you have to do mixed media, you have to do scrapbooking, you have to work with paper, you have to do with that. We create uh, principles because we want to reach the global community and that's the easiest and the most economical way of reaching people with our art and with our products to help and encourage them to create. So to give you an element to start you off with. That's what we we intend to do with our principal section um, of our business. And we still do print, print uh, printable products and we want to develop that as well. We're busy with a lot of things behind the scenes. But um, this club is for the general creative person who, who, who doesn't want to be put in a box. You want to be able to try the things that you want to try out and experiment. So the best explanation of, I started off <laughs> with that, the best e explanation I found um, with the creative process that really opened up my head about how I should proceed on my journey was an artist called Paulette in Seoul. She's an um, American mixed media artist. She's currently doing a lot of abstract paintings and stuff, which is amazing, but um, she started off with little portraits, like I did as well, and that's what drew me in. And I started looking at a lot of different artists doing portraits because I wanted to learn about faces and how to draw faces. So I couldn't do it. My sister is a wonderful, amazing artist and she, she does really cute faces and um, she can, she can uh, paint real, very realistically. But I'm more of an abstract, uh, impressionistic artist and I found that out through my journey. Um, and, and to embrace that, not to try and be a realist uh, artist when you're something else. Um, people like Van Gogh and, um, and other impressionistic artists really inspire me. So I like the process of that. And so if you look at, at my little paintings that I've done, this one is um, a couple of years old. I did this when we returned from Saudi in 2015. And um, I was dreaming of going home, so I did this one. So this is just, I like the smaller versions of art because it's easy to um, take it with you. It's easy to uh, create. It doesn't, it's not so daunting. So when you start off creating stuff, then start off with a smaller um, surface so that it doesn't frighten you that much. Even if you go this small, um, you can create a really cute artwork and it can be an original and you can love the process without it taking lots and lots of hours because I found that I'm an impatient artist, I want to see immediate results and that's why I love things like watercolor and gelatos and acrylics, things that dry easily, dry quickly and gives you vibrant colors and, and uh, quick results. And then I like to incorporate paper. So I've always loved paper and, and my love for paper reflects in my art as well. I use paper in this little girl. I didn't use paper in this one, but I have done uh, art works with paper as well. So um, back to the mood board. Um, just to finish off, what, the, what I learned from Paulette was that she explained it this way. When you start on your journey, you are like a naturalist. A naturalist goes outside into nature with a little knapsack and a pair of scissors and collects elements from nature um, that they like or want to explore or want to study. Then they go into the lab like a scientist. So your next step, step is, a, is being a scientist. 
you go into your little lab, your little studio, and then you experiment with all the things that you collected outside. So, for instance, say you you're on social media, you on you do searches on Google about art and creative stuff that you're interested in, and you collect, you save images, you save articles, you save stuff and ideas, and you want to experiment with those. Then you go into your little studio, and then you're the scientist, and you experiment with what you collected. And that doesn't mean that you are going to incorporate all of those things in your art. You're going to try them out, and the things that work for you, those are the things that you keep. Okay, so say for instance you like stenciling and then you go try it out but it doesn't work for you. Um, then you don't force yourself to buy a lot of stencils. <laughs> Start with one and play around with that one stencil and see how much you can get out of it and if you really like the process and the messiness of it. If you don't, then don't invest in it. Don't go buy all the new stencils on the market just because everybody says you have to have it. You don't. You need to... Be mindful of what it is that that is going to work for your art and your art space and, and the time you have available. Um, I just made a try I'm, I'm trying out jelly printing and I've just made my own jelly print um, a week ago and then I messed it up for some reason. I think it was uh, my f uh, form that I used for uh, Shaping it wasn't was too big, so uh, I did a smaller one this weekend. I melted it down on the stove and I did a smaller one. So I'm going to try it out. There's my jelly print. So I've got my own one, and it's not too big and it's not too small, and uh, it came out really well. Especially the texture of it was better the second time around when I melted it down. So I'm kind of learning through the process that, and I saw it on a couple of videos that people said the second time when they, they made it, put, put it in, into a mold, it didn't work, and then they melted it down, and after they melted it, take note, it worked. It worked better, it was a smoother um, end result, and I found the same thing. And, and so I was learning something out of it as a scientist, testing it, that maybe you need to melt it. There's, you need to heat the gelatin and the, um, uh, the gelatin and, well, I can't get on the word, the glycerin, sorry, the glycerin and the gelatin and the water together so that it kind of becomes one thing. So I don't want to cook all of it. I didn't cook it at all. I just uh, melted it down in a double cooker um, just until everything was liquid and I took it off because you don't want a lot of gases because it becomes plastic. You don't want gases, you don't want to affect your health. So I needed to experiment with the process for myself. And so the next step would be to play with the jelly print, to make my own prints, use the stencils I have and the stuff that I have uh, available to, to play with the process. Because yes, I want to try it out because I can make my own paper and remember I said paper was my thing. Okay, so I'm not going to invest, so I'm just going to put it away. I don't want to invest in, a, in jelly printing and the whole process before I have decided that it's actually for me. So if I find it's not something that it's sustainable in my art space and I'm going to do it over and over again, and it's just a fad that comes and goes, because there's a lot of that out there. Um, I experiment with it without investing my whole heart and energy and everything into that one thing. Okay, so um, that's the second phase. The final phase, and then I'll flip through the mood board, is uh, actually being a DJ. And you know what a DJ does. They just play to their heart con heart's content. They create their own music. And that's what I want you to do, is at the end of the day, you can collect all the ideas. You can want to try and try out all the trends and all the latest products and, and collections and paper and everything. You can try it out and invest all of your money in it. But if you don't come to the end of the process there where you become the DJ and you create your own stuff, then you've wasted your time. You haven't grown at all. All you've done is become a consumer and a hoarder. And that's what happens to artists who stop creating. They hoard stuff. They, there's a retail therapy in, in just buying stuff and saying, oh, I have that. I have the latest this and I have the latest that. 
Um, people stock up all the new cutting machines. My goodness, how many cutting machines can you have? If you want 10, then start a business and use all 10. Otherwise, just don't buy it. Use the one that you have. Um, I have a Silhouette Kanya and there's a lot of new products out there. I'm not going to buy the newest one if mine is still functioning and, and gives me what I need. Um, be mindful of what you buy, what you invest in. It's important for your creative process to not over invest. You can be really, really creative with very, very little. And I always say get back to basics. So in the club we're going to promote having this. This is what you need. This is your basic major tool, a good pair of scissors, um, your uh, metal ruler. Uh, I had mine uh, last night downstairs in the TV room and I was sitting and watching movies using my metal ruler and my cutting mat. I've got three cutting mats, a small one for traveling. I've got this new one for my um, studio. I've got a pink one as well. Um, a large one and one that I bought overseas. So the cutting mats I feel is an investment for me. So this one is new because I wanted something nice and crisp for the videos and then I've got the pink one that's really used and um, also a larger surface like this one and I don't mind having two because I want my um, desk space actually covered in cutting mats and so I need one more than it, then my, my desk will be covered but um, if you just have one that's fine you get a small A4 one and they're not too expensive I bought this one at PNA, our local station shop so you, this is all you need, you don't need a large surface if you're going to cut paper um, I got a trimmer after many many years of not having a trimmer and I have this one, very basic um, I don't use it that often, but sometimes I do, um, because you have to replace the blades, you have to think it through. Uh, you get really wonderful paper trimmers, um, it's something that I would invest in, is a good quality one someday, but at the moment I really don't need it. Um, I am happy with my craft knife, I've, I'm working through one, uh, yesterday I saw that I only have a couple of um, blade break-offs left, I think one, two, three, then it's done. So I need a new a new cutting knife and it's not that expensive to purchase. So that's what you need. Um, and that's if you if you're just going to work with paper. So in your art journal you may want to use some uh, craft paints. So I suggest the Americana paints. I use them regularly and they last a really long time and they're good quality and they're easy to work with and they've got really vibrant um, and a great range of colors available in it and the other one that is a local brand that I like to um, support is Dala because it's locally manufactured um, they do get their resources from overseas but it's locally manufa manufactured it's a very affordable price and it's a safe product kids can use this so I like using the craft paints as well and they are bringing new colors all the time and I see that they also have a, a, a metallic range so I've bought a couple of metal uh, craft paint I like the, the gold one this is the yeah the gold one I've got a couple of others of those and they, they're inexpensive, easy to, easy to use and you've got paint, you need some gel medium and gesso for your uh, process, for your creative process in your art journal so I use the dollar, I don't use anything else I am a locally, um, locally proudly South African supporter of business here in my country so I want to put uh, food on the table of local South Africans so start with supporting your local brands and your local um, stores and shops and manufacturers because then you're stimulating your own economy and that's important for your own survival if you're an artist because then you get product that is affordable and um, available in near and close by you don't have to buy stuff and import from far away and it costs you an arm and a leg so don't be swayed too much about the imported products they're great they can be great quality but they're very expensive and don't let that deter you from being creative
go basic, use the basic stuff. I buy a tub of these uh, gesso uh, uh, containers, the 500 mil one, and it lasts me forever, really long time. And uh, you can scoop it out and use that bit because it can dry up quickly. Scoop it out and close the lid, always close it, and then put that away and use it in the smaller container. You don't scoop it back, try and use up what you scoop out. Okay, so that's just a quick tip. Right, so gesso can go a long way. You can use gesso with your stencils, you can prime surfaces with it, you can add white to stuff, you can um, add some water to it and make uh, little splats on your on your surfaces with the gesso. There's a lot of things that you can do with one product and I want to encourage that. So that's the thing is getting down to basics and becoming that DJ in your creative space, playing with the things that you've collected, the things that you've experimented with and then creating your art with it. If you don't end up getting to that uh, last phase, or not actually a last phase, I mean if you're starting out there are three phases, the naturalist phase, the scientist and the DJ. From there onwards you will find yourself wanting to do more of your own thing, you won't need as much inspiration from the outside because your own creativity will feed itself and you will start to find your own ideas. So that's where I want you, if you're watching this video, that's where I want you to, to be is in a place where you live your thumbprint, not mine, not somebody else's. So you can look through the video, you can watch videos from other people, but make that your your naturalist phase, collecting ideas. Note it down. Have a journal and a notebook that you write down your ideas, otherwise you're never going to try it. Um, sorry, if, I don't know if you're hearing the dog in the background. That's my neighbor's dog. Man, that dog can drive us nuts. Goodness me. But I think the owner is now shouted at him, so he's going to be quiet. Okay, so here we go. Opening up my mood board. Uh, I have a little ribbon, organza ribbon, just to keep everything together. Because I've decided it's going to be a little flip book. Um, because I think that re represents more of who I am. There are many layers to me and my personality. And it's not just a one-dimensional thing. And how do I put that on an A4 page? How do I show myself or others... Um, what I'm like if if I if I can't show you the layering because a mixed media artist is all about the layers right it's, it's just layering on and that's one thing one big thing that that really helped me uh, grow in my art is to understand that if I look at something because all of us creatives we have a little bit of perfectionism when you look at our art we're very hard on ourselves normally less so on others and um, and then you chuck something before before you really discovered what it's going to be, you think it's bad or it doesn't look like what you had in mind, and then you get rid of it instead of just layering in it. And I'll show you later on just a quick um, what I did with an old artwork that I really didn't like. I, I didn't throw it out, I left it in my uh, art journal, and later on, more than a year later, I actually changed it into something that I really loved. Okay, so first of all, I used my Leaf magazine, and I really love the Leaf magazine. Christine Ferrara sponsored me boxes and boxes full for my um, creative Bible journaling dream book workshops that I started last year. I haven't done workshops lately. We've been really busy in the studio, so maybe this year we will try out some more workshops and use the magazines. Okay, so I started off cutting some elements from a magazine that really represented me. Um, Handley cut. Uh, Kotze's art is really beautiful. I love this piece, so I cut it out. I started off with a, a mixed media background with stenciling and art and paint, and I cut it up and I used it in the layers here. You'll be able to see it. I'll do some close ups on my blog. Um, I love bees. I bought myself a little dinky die, uh, bee die, die, and I cut out, um, used it for the first time, and cut out some bees. And this is the little bee that um, Sarita first designed for our Wild and Free collection in the first year that we started with our paper collections. And she's done a black and white one for the latest Love Girl collection uh, cube cuts. So I love the little bee. I put some glossy accents on, on the body so that it's just a little bit dimensional there. I'm a big fan of the zebra. 
um, my husband's nickname is Kwaha. So um, I, I know the Kwahas are extinct. <laughs> so he's one of a kind. <laughs> so I've added the Kwaha there, or the zebra. And then we love the little um, uh, flowers here. I'm, I'm a big fan of flowers. Sorry, I'm thinking in my own language, so I'm struggling with the words. So this is the Bach Breiki, is the, the name, Afrikaans name of this flower. It's a type of protea um, that you get in the Cape, and it's really, really beautiful. It's normally used in wedding bouquets, and so we added those into our wild and free collection as well. And um, so I found a little uh, jug with, um, with those flowers in, so I added those. And the little flowers inside here as well, Surita, I recognize these. She painted these as well as part of that collection, and I realize now it's part of the fang boss um, that you get in, that's indigenous to the Cape, and it's really, really beautiful. And that flower looks exactly like the one in the collection. Um, I'm only noticing that now. Okay, so there's the first flip introducing me. I'm a busy bee. That's where the lily bee comes from. The lily, if you wondered about the lily bee. Um, this little bee, Sarita, designed for me as an icon for my Art by Ansu um, signature. And the lily comes from my name, Grace Lily. My name means Graceful Lily, so that's where the lily comes from. And bee is my surname, but it also refers to the busy bee, the queen bee in the studio, always busy, and it's a little bit of an ADD bee, she's all over the place. Okay, so now you know what that's about. Alright, so I'm a girl, girly girl, and so I added this, a piece of the uh, Love Day ephemera there, and flipping over there's a picture of me and explaining my name, Ansu Faith Girl, Grace Lily, and just some elements, and there's the Grace Lily Girl, so this is my Bible journaling girly. Um, if you want to join, then there's, you can follow the Grace Lily channel on, on YouTube, Faith Art, Grace Lily Faith Art channel, and there's also a Grace Lily Faith Art page and group over on Facebook. Okay, and I lately also created the blog. Um, I played around with WordPress, but um, it was just frustrating me because all of my other blogs I manage over at Blogger, and so I imported it back into Blogger, and I'm I still have to work on some of the, the content there because the input back into Blogger, just um, the configuration, there was something there that happened that um, messed up my images and stuff was lost. So I just need to work through the couple of blogs that I have there and then I will continue from there. So there's a lot of work still to do. Okay, the next flip um, shows Heart and the little um, Private Tree Studio Birdie. I found this in the magazine, it looks like our little birdie icon, so I put it that, put that in, and it's also a representation of the Holy Spirit in my life, and God's presence, and in my heart as well. Okay, and then if you flip it over, there's something about my husband being um, married, it's all about love, my little baby cat, and more texture in the background, there's a little butterfly, I love butterflies, most scrapbookers do, and then so happy together, so referring to my marriage, and every day is love day, and I use some of the love day elements and the like in here. Okay, and then if you flip over, I just want to move it up, I just need to take a sip of water. Okay, here's more about the art and things I love, so my art journaling, my dream book process, um, that I started about 17 years plus ago. Um, I love journaling and my dream book. So the dream book process is a lot about uh, praying and scripture writing, noting scripture, noting what God says to you in a creative way, adding images to visualize your dreams and the things that you're waiting for and praying for. And that helped me through uh, a lot of um, difficult days and waiting on getting a husband and but it's not just about a marriage getting a husband or asking God for a, a partner in life it's about anything that you can, that you're praying for and and so I really love that process um, I love ideas I love playing with ideas thinking up ideas so I'm known as the idea girl and um, I'm also a memory keeper and I love art so I there's a little Abigail that I got from the Leaf magazine and I 
brought her in here. So I love art and I love glass. I've, I've got a love of beautiful glass pieces. Um, I think if I could be an artist of something specific, it would be creating lovely glass um, creations. Um, okay, and then uh, I love Jesus. So I put him in the center kind of of everything. So I love Jesus. You are my happy place. My home is with you now and forever. And I encourage myself to take more photos this month and document my, my life. This side I put um, some of the ephemera from the Love Day collection as well, some creative girl ephemera and the textured background that I created, uh, I showcased here. I added a little tab there at the, at the top. Then I added a little girly here from the magazine um, just because of the, of the words that was um, in the headline of the article. Um, or subheading, sub she said um, he had a reason um, to create me the way he did. So my muchness isn't too much. People can sometimes make you feel like if you're a creative person or an artist, you kind of don't fit into the general scheme of things and people can make you feel that your muchness is too much. And a while back on Instagram, Jean Oliver, an, an American artist, posted a little video on the subject and it blew me away. It was just so encouraging and I won't forget those words. Your muchness is not too much, it's just right. Um, God created you with all of your muchness. It's a reflection of Him. So never, never, ever apologize for who you are and how you function. Um, if there's sin in your life, that's a different story. If you've got a bad attitude, that's a different story. But the way you function, the way you create it, creatively um, don't apologize for that okay so I feel blessed um, I am a writer so I also added the typewriter I love the butterflies it, it kind of represents the softness and the gentleness of the Holy Spirit um, in my life and little birdies and um, books and little fonts here I said more words because I'm blessed with a lot of words as you can hear and my little home, I've got a little tiny house, tiny house nation, <laughs> so I have a little tiny house and I love my little ha home and so there's me in front of my home and I love photographs, I love taking pictures of things artistically, uh, uh, art artistic photography, I love that. Um, I'm married to an absolute adventurer and photographer at heart, he's also a teacher but um, he's more of a also a little bit of a writer, he's getting into blogging more and more, um, so proud of him. So uh, taking more pictures, there's some more light bulbs from um, a collection I bought the other day and I thought these were just ideal for my mood board. And more butterflies from the Love Day collection that I added recently in the shop available, so if you want those. And the little Lily, Lily Bee Girl, Creative Girl. Um, they will also be available soon in the shop uh, which is busy with um, creating the new Creative Girl collection and I've shared some of the elements already in the store with the, for the um, club's opening the club members receive a little bundle with some elements from that collection but they are just a little bit of the bigger collection coming out soon okay and um, that's my mood board I added some um, straws here and it's wide straws uh, if you go to the Wimpy our local restaurant you will find that they now offer paper straws instead of the plastic ones and I'm so happy about that so it's a lighter footprint in the world but we have a friend there one of the waiters at our local Wimpy her name is Mavis and I love her to bits she's so loving and um, we get a hug every time we go there and I asked her for some wimpy straws the other day so she don't tell her boss and she gave me just a couple and I sprayed them just to put a little bit of my friend in here as well and to remind me that um, friendships is also important in life okay so there we go um, one of the last things here is to love hard that's important in life. You can have all the creativity and art, art in the world, but if you don't have love, then you, you don't really have anything. So I hope that my mood board um, 
kind of gave you a couple of ideas what you can do. Um, a mood board can be something that you pin on just images, random images and color swatches and things that you pin onto a notice board. So you can have a notice board up that is a permanent mood board that you change around every month. I don't have, a, unfortunately, a lot of wall space in my studio, which um, I'm really sad about because I, I'm a visual person, so I would like to put my art up and everything. But maybe someday I'll have that. But for now, I work in my journals. And so this would be up in my studio somewhere visually where I can see it throughout the month and when I'm done with it I'll put it into my art journal so that's why it's kind of A4 I put it on a steady backing because it's heavy and I hope you enjoyed this video so uh, leave us a comment down below and um, I will also put some links for you to the shop and um, to the club if you want to join us please go and join over on the website and not on Facebook Facebook is your last step after you've uh, applied officially and bought your membership bundle and um, then we can activate your membership over in the store. We do that because we want to make sure that you read all the information about the club first, make sure that you really understand what it's about, what you would be investing in and then ask you to pay, pay a small amount just that we know that you're committing because if people pay for stuff then they are more inclined to really appreciate what they receive and, and work at it um, instead of just joining a random group on Facebook and sitting there like a veal, not doing anything and, and not engaging. Um, I quickly saw the same tendencies happen like in the previous groups and unfortunately that's not what I want to invest my time in. So um, we change things around really quickly. Um, to offer a paid membership, you pay a once-off fee of 150 as a new member, and then you receive a big bundle to the value of 300 rand. So it's double that amount um, that you receive in printables and things for the club. And then you get access to the group, and there's also sp uh, special discounts and things that you receive to encourage you to keep on creating. Okay, so that's why there's, it's now a membership, paid membership. It's to make sure that we don't have any false starts with people joining up and then they don't actually want to be in the club. We want people there who really make the decision to be there and, and they will uh, commit to the process. Because uh, let's be uh, real, um, it takes a lot of time to create successful groups and communities and we need investment and I work really hard to put uh, content out there for the club. Last year, week was a crazy week because we had a lot of planning for our retreats and stuff and we will have to move that forward because we now have to change our membership and um, include a paid membership with benefits and everything that comes with that and that means content needs to be created and that takes a lot of time so signing off uh, from IB2 Studio a little bit tired this week starting my week off but feeling um, really accomplished with what I've been doing and so there's your mood board flip through that I promised and I'm also going to blog about it over on my blog, um, on the Ivy Tree Studio blog and my personal blog of by Ansu. So I hope to see you there. Come and say hi and, and uh, put your face in the follow, follow gallery. Um, love to see your face there and engage with you creatively over on the blog as well. So have a wonderfully creative week. Bye-bye. Um,